professional An indeed. excellent fight. Coming up here, the second half of our Boxing After Dark doubleheader, Marco Antonio Barrera of Mexico City against Kennedy McKinney, former Olympic gold medalist from here in the United States. Right now, we're about to get ready for that uh, McKinney Barrera fight, and we can't go to it without first showing you the buildup, which began this past Tuesday at a press conference here in Los Angeles to promote the fight. McKinney unleashed a barrage of verbiage at Barrera, and as you'll see, Barrera came up with a surprising response. I have a wife and a house and a car, bills I gotta pay, and I dare for you to come here and think you can beat me. Huh? Think you can beat me, boy? You cannot beat me. You cannot whoop me here in my town. This is. Notice that McKinney did not throw back. Now, the last time we saw something like that, Roy, it was Riddick Bowe who clocked Larry Donald, also here in L.A., a few days before their fight. And then when they got into the ring, Bo all but ran Larry Donald out of the ring. Might we see the same thing again tonight? Well, I don't think we're going to see the same thing tonight because Kennedy McKinney is a much older fighter. He's the older of the two, and his job is to try to distract the youngster, get his mind off what's really going on. However, I don't think he did that to Barrera, but um, there's no way that any fighter can run McKinney out of a ring by just the fact that he hit him or he stole him at a, at a press conference. Well, McKinney told us yesterday, in fact, that he was pleased by what happened. He said to us that it had been his aim to get inside the younger fighter's head and rattle him. Do you think he accomplished that, Larry? Well, if he got inside this kid's head, I'm not sure he liked what he saw. <laughs> <laughs> because he may seem like a quiet, passive kid, but deep down there's a lot of turbulence going on there. Many people regard Barrera as the equivalent at the same stage of their careers as Julio Cesar Chavez. He may be the best fighter south of Oscar De La Hoya, not only geographically, but also in his weight class. And what this prize fight tonight is really all about, what this night is about, is to find out if Barrera is as good as many people think he is, and that would be very, very good. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape as we get ready to bring the two fighters into the ring. And you'll see the eight-year age gap that we've discussed. Barrera at 22, McKinney at 30. Barrera weighed in at 121, but a little while ago in his dressing room, we weighed him and discovered that he is up to 133 pounds. So he's put on 12 pounds since yesterday's weigh-in. McKinney, on the other hand, weighed in at 122. He's put on nine pounds, entered the ring tonight, at 131, and you can see the four-inch reach advantage for McKinney, which he'll hope to use to establish the jab and control the tempo of the fight. Larry? Uh, Jim, I think the numbers that are most important here are 22 and 30. 30 is middle age, at least, for fighters in this weight class. It would really take a heroic effort for McKinney at this point to be the McKinney of old. Punch stat numbers upcoming show a contrast in the career progress of the two fighters. Larry? Yeah, uh, in recent fights, you can see that Barrera is landing a higher and higher percentage of his punches. And in contrast, as we'll see here in a moment, McKinney has been landing a lower and lower percentage of punches. And rules of the bout with Harold Letterman after dark. The, the Marco Antonio Barrera Kennedy McKinney fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. The rules are pretty much the same. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the belt in the last round only. Jim. All right, Harold Letterman. And first into the ring will be the former Olympic gold medalist. Started his career as a legitimate featherweight, fighting at 125 pounds, and then discovered that he might be more effective and might make more money by coming down to this weight class. Because he's stronger and he feels that's his main edge. Barrera, in contrast, started out as a 115-pounder. We'll see if that's meaningful. When he first won a world title in this weight class, he successfully defended it five times, then traveled to South Africa and lost it to a fighter named Bungu. That's the only loss on his record. There's also been 
one draw, 17 KOs for the boxer, Kennedy McKinney. But I say the boxer because the next man in is the puncher in this fight. It's clear, Jim, that the Mexican fans in Los Angeles have already embraced him as their once and future hero. Well, he's already fought here several times. 22-year-old Marco Antonio Barrera already with 39 professional fights, 27 KOs in those 39 fights. He says he's going to be a lawyer after his boxing career is over, but for right now, he comes into the ring and takes the law into his own gloved hands. And right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Forum Boxing in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman William Eastman, Vice Chairman, NFL Hall of Famer Willie Buchanan, Commissioners in attendance at ringside, Kim Wilshans and Andrew Kim, Executive Officer Richard DeCure. This contest is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, President and Supervisor at ringside, Francisco Barcarcel. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Robert Byrd, Huiso Fernandez, and Lou Filippo. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Pat Russell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Great Western Forum here in Englewood, California, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing maroon trimmed with gold, and weighing in at 122 pounds. In 1988, he captured Olympic gold, and now as a professional, he has a record of 28 victories, 17 by knockout with only one defeat, and one draw, and two world titles to his credit. Tonight, he is looking for another one. Ladies and gentlemen, the current WBO title holder and two-time featherweight champion of the world, the challenger, Kennedy, the king, McKinney. And his opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing white trimmed with red and weighing in at 121 pounds. He brings a perfect record of 39 victories without a loss, 27 by knockout. And he is considered by most to be one of the best in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated junior featherweight champion of the world, Thomas de Caballero. Con Ciudad de México de Efe, Marco Antonio Barrera. One second, one second only. Everybody else back. One second, one second. Championship of the world. Touch your gloves. Touch your gloves. Go back. 
Kennedy to McKinney says, who has he fought? Who has he hurt? Who has he knocked down? We shall see. This is going to be everything that we expect it to be because Kennedy will not back down from nobody. 24-foot yeah. ring, Roy. Huge. Whom does it benefit? It has to benefit Marco Antonio Barrero because McKinney will be there. I don't think he plans to move. He will be there. Barrero opens with a left hook. His trademark punch misses it, but McKinney knows it's there. Kennedy promised to be sharp with the jab tonight. He's starting out working it. I hope he just doesn't get too comfortable walking to Barrero's right hand because Barrero has a very good right hand. Two Here it is. Barrera. Doubled up with that right hand, lands a third one. McKinney smiles back. That usually means, yeah, you caught me. Now McKinney just landed a right hand of his own. But he's getting hit a lot more than he's expected this early, I'm sure. McKinney's been knocked down in his career twice by Welcome Nasita. He's never been knocked out. He's in against a lights-out puncher tonight. Don't be surprised about Kennedy's own power. Kennedy has very good power in his own right hand. Mexican crowd, Mexican crowd rooting for Barrera. McKinney, who's from Memphis, Tennessee, hoping to cook up some soul stew for them. Right hand just missed. There you go. McKinney landed the right hand, though. And McKinney has a very good right hand. If he's in good shape, this is going to be a great fight tonight. Barrera with a left hook to the body. He dips when he throws the left hook, Roy. That, because that gets more power on the hook when he dips and throws it. You're talking about Barrera, right? Yep. Yeah, that's because he can get more power into it. And he's moving outside of the right hand when he dips. That's very smart for a fighter to do. Earlier in the evening on the undercard, Barrera's brother won a victory over an outclassed opponent and forged it largely on the strength of the left hook. Kennedy seems to be breathing a little hard already. Barrera going to the body with the left hand, staying upstairs with those right hand leads. McKinney just misses with a right of his own. Marco Antonio Barrera's fans call him the baby-faced assassin. He is as calm in outward demeanor as just about any fighter we've ever met. Very reminiscent of Salvador Sanchez, who was one of my favorite of all time. Kenny is forcing Barrero to try some different angles at him now because the jab is not allowing Barrero to come straight down the pipe at McKinney. Hard right hand landed for McKinney. I told you McKinney has a very good right hand. Barrera coming back with a left hook. Early returns on Barrera's jaw pretty good because Kennedy has landed solidly twice with the right hand, now make it three. I think McKinney should do just as Barrero is doing and beat the body some. Barrera's doing a great work on McKinney's body right now. You got to utilize the jab a lot more, okay? Just sit back and wait on it. Also, after you finish utilizing the jab, hands up, slipping, pivot around to the right, close enough to where you drop the right hand off, okay? You're rushing a little bit too much. You're rushing just a little bit. Not the jab, you're doing okay. Come on, step out. All right, Mike, listen to me again. Double up on the jab. You only throw in one jab, okay? Make him miss. Catch it, block, Perry. Early in the round, Herrera served notice. You can see he's coming right there. But as McKinney said, who has he hurt? McKinney doesn't think he can be hurt by Barrera, whose effectiveness is usually in the number of punches he lands rather than in any one punch he lands. And true to his word, McKinney got the jab working in round number one, outlanding Barrera in the jab category, 28 to 5 by punch stat numbers. But that can be his most useful punch, and at the same time, his most dangerous punch, because if he uses it a lot, it can also allow Barrera to count over with the right hand if he's not careful. Kennedy carries his left jab very low. Super middleweight champion and superstar fighter Roy Jones providing the expert commentary tonight. Round two, main event, this inaugural telecast of HBO's Boxing After Dark. And I'd have to credit HBO, too, because they could not have picked a better fight for this first event. Well said. Why does that hurt McKinney bad? 
Herrera knows it. Follows up with a barrage. Hard left hand to the middle of McKinney's chest. Now Kennedy's able to weather the storm and get back out with the jab. It's interesting that he backed off Herrera. He landed a good shot in there and backed him off. You don't often see that in Herrera. At the same time, Barrera has to be very careful not to punch himself out. These power shots take a lot more energy than the regular punches you throw. Short right hand in close by Kennedy McKinney. Again, Barrera takes it impassively. McKinney trying to work the uppercut from long range. That can be dangerous. We're going to find out about Barrera's condition here tonight, too, I feel, if McKinney can keep the body shots off of him. And if he can continue to work at this pace. He's yeah. 30 years old. Barrera's hurting very bad to the body. He's taking the steam out of McKinney's punches by landing those body shots. Kennedy yep. should hit his body some. McKinney had hoped that when he dipped to throw that left hand to the body that he could counter with his right hand and that would discourage him from throwing it off him. But so far, we haven't seen him do that, Roy. Because the reason he dips is to get out the way of the right hand. There, McKinney tried to go to the body. The reason Barrero dips to throw the body shot is so that he doesn't get caught with the right hand. Incidentally, don't be confused. Johnny Tapia has already been oh, given okay, a victory oh, 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 in the first fight of the evening. The reason Barrero wears the word Tapia on the back of his trunks is because that's his mother's maiden name. Just a coincidence. Good right hand by McKinney. He tried to sneak one down. Oh, another good right hand by Solid McKinney. Solid right hand by McKinney there. It becomes a bit more of a boxing match as round two winds down. Kennedy McKinney still pumping that jab and trying to test Marco Antonio Barrera, who comes with the left hook to the body. Maintain your guard up. Keep your hands up. We don't want this guy to be boxing you all night. You gotta press the issue. Round three. Don't push his head when it's inside and keep those punches above the waist. Marco, dale. Punch him in the body, Marco. He's very weak in the body. You gotta hit the body. Go side to side and hit him with the left hook, Marco. When he throws the right hand, throw one, two, and hit him on the body. Hook to the head. Give it around the right. Drop the right hand off, okay? The right hand is hurting. Hey, Roy, the man who does the talking in Kennedy McKinney's corner is former United States amateur boxing coach Kenny Adams. I'm sure you've worked around him some. What kind of a trainer is he? He's a very smart trainer, uh, very precise with his uh, commands. He tells you exactly what he wants you to do, exactly what will work and what won't work, and he expects you to get out there and do it. Tough taskmaster, a former Marine drill sergeant. Let me tell you one other thing. McKinley is one of the strongest punchers for his weight that you'll ever see. He has one of the better right hands for that size of anybody I've ever seen in the game. So I think Barrera might be a harder puncher, Roy. With the left hand, but not with the right hand. Okay. And he looks like he's been peeled out of a textbook. He's Erect, throws correct, straight punches. You don't often see this kind of a classic kind of a boxer puncher as McKinney is anymore. And that's what won him a gold medal at the Olympics. He was the strongest puncher for his size at his own career. That was a good try with the left hook, just came a little short. Kenny is very much into this fight. Don't count him out because Barrera's backing up. I think Barrera may be a little confused at this point. He doesn't really know how to get to McKinnon. Barrera might have felt that with the shots he landed in the first couple of rounds, he'd have taken out most of his previous opponents, and that's one of the things that Kennedy harps on when he talks about Barrera. Who has he fought? And that jab began to be a very frustrating thing to Barrera. By him being so laid back, he may enable himself to be caught with the right hand again soon. 
it Andy seems, McKinney able to stay busy with the jab, Larry. It seems that Herrera is allowing McKinney to, to set the tempo of what's been going on through most of this round. And that was that right hand that I told you he'd be getting caught with soon, too. I think Barrero's just trying to sit back and let McKinnon work himself out a little bit. But I think McKinnon can keep this pace up all night because he's fighting at his own pace. This is a very high work rate for Kennedy McKinney, whose punch output had been dropping in recent fights. Tonight, he appears to be all there. Anytime you put pressure on a guy like this, you make him come up to a, another level. There was another right hand that I told you Kennedy would be landing soon. And Marco Antonio Barrera flirting with low blows when he throws that left hand to the body. There's another one right on the top of the trunks, and another. Well, that's good for McKinnon because they're not good body shots. The cup absorbs the shot. Tell that to Giovanni Andrade. Beautifully said, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Hollywood right now, <laughs> auditioning. You got the jab, you got the feint, you got the right hand. That's what McKinney wants to do. The reason, what he, the reason he's telling him he got the jab and he got the feint and he got the right hand is because he knows that if he keeps the jab in Barrero's face, it keeps him off balance. By feinting at him, he never can see the right hand coming. Therefore, McKinney can hit him with the straight right hand. In the third round, Kennedy threw 73 punches. That's an exceptionally high punch output once again for him. Barrero has allowed McKinney to fight his own pace. I said before in the fight that if Barrero let McKinney dictate the pace, it would be a very difficult fight for him. He can't win this fight if he keeps letting McKinney dictate the pace. And that was the key issue in the Kennedy-McKinney camp. They said we need to establish and maintain the tempo of the fight to our advantage. So far, it's working for Kennedy-McKinney. I would just like to see him hit Barrero's body every now and then, because Barrero keeps touching his body. Like that. All three of those left hand body shots missed. McKenney blocked one with the elbow. The other three were along the belt line and did no damage. So Kennedy McKenney is muffling the body attack of Barrera right now, and Barrera begins to show the frustration. The frustration basically is that jab, though. The jab is called is setting everything up for Kennedy. It's keeping Barrero to where Barrero can't think and can't set McKinney up. There it is again. There he tried to hit him with a body shot. He can't commit too much to this, though, because Barrero's still strong. in the counter right hand shot is Barrera. Each one landed a little better than its predecessor as he landed three in a row. Because McKinney is committing too far. His arms are long enough to where he can stay outside and keep doing what he was doing. Beat him on the outside. Don't lay it there for Barrera to hit him. Hard Good left hand by McKinney. Right hand to the body by McKinney. Barrera firing back, but his punches lacking snap at this moment. Because he's frustrated. He's never probably been in and been hit this many times this early in a fight. Kenny getting more and more aggressive. He takes a right-hand counter uppercut in return. There and now this careless. turns it around for Barrera. He can't get careless. He's getting careless some. Barrera's making it look too easy to him, and he's getting careless. Barrera showing his counter-punching ability and then taking over. This is a fight. Folks, this is about as good as it gets. Laura crowd rises to its feet after a brilliant fourth round. That's what makes champions, baby. That's what makes champions. You got all night. Coming on the lane. Don't worry about it, Mike. How you feeling? Push him back now. Push him back. Push him back. Let's push him back, back. 
You gotta keep hitting him to the body. Keep your hands up and throw to the body. Make sure you connect with that right hand because he is jabbing you to death here. Carrera has been flurrying at the end of the rounds like a veteran trying to steal the rounds, but I can't imagine he's fooling too many people on this occasion. Kenny McKinney is determined to make this a last hurrah. If he goes out, it will be going out on a very, very big effort. Fight is scheduled for 12 rounds after four. Both men have made their statements. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through four rounds? Well, Larry, in the first round, I went for the power punch of Marco Antonio Barrera. But rounds two, three, and four, I really stayed with the boxer. I think Kennedy McKinney's out boxing him. I got a 39-37, three rounds to one, Kennedy McKinney. I have it two, one, and one even for McKinney. Let me say one thing. Coach Adams told Kennedy to keep pushing him back. And he's telling him the right thing because Kennedy's jab is keeping Barrera off balance by keeping him going backwards. Barrera is not used to fighting going backwards. That's the powerful belief of Kenny Adams is that Barrera cannot fight going backwards. He likens this fight to Thomas Hearns against Pepino Cuevas. I wouldn't say he can't fight going back, but he doesn't do it much. And therefore, he's not as experienced at it as he is coming forward. Both fighters getting a little bit more flat-footed now as round five arrives. And Kenny trying to land one of those right-hand shots that Roy's been talking about. As long as he doesn't get too close and doesn't get too used to pushing Barrera back. Because Barrera will come back every now and then with something hard. Like that hook. Isn't he fighting McKinney's fight by yes. trying to jab with him? Yes, he is. And that's what McKinney should keep him doing. That's why I say he shouldn't go forward too much and get too close to him. Because there, they turn it into Barrera's fight. As long as they stay outside, they keep it at McKinney's fight. And that's so what McKinney far. should do. And so far, McKinney's been able to accomplish the difficult task of blocking the body shots and then coming back upstairs and establishing tempo with the jab. He's okay at this moment. Yes, he is. He's very strong at this moment. And right now, he could be, what we would say, in Barrera's head. Now McKinney turns to talk to referee Pat Russell, and Barrera takes advantage. As long as McKinney doesn't get too complacent here, and get too flat-footed, he'd be okay. Well, they might be a little distracted. I think he feels like he's had enough of the low blows, and he'd like for the referee to at least say something about it. He should wait till you go back to the corner and tell Kenny Adams to come in and say something to the ref. Get, give him water and sponge him down. Get, get some water now. Here we go. Just sponge on him now. There'll be no more after the bell. I want you to keep those punches up. Watch those shoulders throwing the shoulders inside. Explain okay, that to him. Okay. Cuidado con el hombre y los golpes bajos. Tú eres más rápido. Mac, listen to me. Double up on the jab. Find the jab. Close enough. Drop the right hand out. Back with the hook. Step around to the right. You haven't stepped all the way, okay? You step around. He's there for you. Drop the right hand. Give it a good pressure. Back it up. Let's go, coach. Mouth beat this. Sixth round of a scheduled 12. Kennedy McKinney of Memphis, Tennessee in the red trunks trimmed with gold. Marco Antonio Barrera of Mexico City in the white. You saw referee Pat Russell at the end of that round go to Barrera's corner and warn him about those blows. I like the fact that he's done that. Before this gets out of hand. I think within the next round or two, Barrero should pick up the pace if he's planning on holding his title. Because right now, he's letting Kennedy dictate the pace, do just what Kennedy wants to do, and he will never beat McKinney like this. Barrero landing a hard right and then a 
left hook inside. Kennedy land a better right uppercut. Kennedy has this fight exactly the way he wants it now. Now he's not afraid to sit in. You can see what Barrera's doing. He had Barrera frustrated. And suddenly Barrera looks very tired. He's never been knocked down, but McKinney appears to be dialing him in for increasing punishment. McKinney is starting to swell around the left eye, too. And he's breathing very hard, but he's in control of this fight. I think he should just stay outside, keep control, and not rush anything, because Marco's not going to get too tired. Excellent right hand by McKinney. This is a war. This is just a war, Roy. A backyard war. Both guys are landing shots with regularity. McKinney with a hard right hand. Oh, good hook. Good body shot. Excellent double left hook by Kennedy McKinney. Oh, they've got it going on in here tonight. I told you this was a barn burner. to get his back off the ropes. Here comes Barrera, and McKinney's on his heels. But Barrera's getting tired also. Don't, don't be misled by this. Both fighters are taking a lot out of each other. Oh, good shot by McKinney. Oh, oh! Both fighters are tired. <laughs> what a trade. Keep the punches up. Keep them up. This is movie town. You've never seen a better round in a movie than the one you just saw. Did you see the number on Barrera? 113 punches thrown in a round. Okay, Marco. Mira, Marco, tú tienes que seguir. You gotta keep fighting this guy. You're, not, you're letting him off the hook. When you hit him again, let him go. He's dead. The question now is, can Kennedy McKinney at 30 keep up this pace? Very good question. If it's going the way it is now, I think he can. Gentlemen, of 190 punches thrown in that last round, 152 of them were power shots. This has become a street brawl. This is what Pedro has to make it into in order to win this fight. With Julio Cesar Chavez sitting at ringside, Pereira shows a Chavez-like will. This is his only way of winning this fight. If he stays outside and lets McKinnon continue to box, he's going to lose the fight. Said you're letting him off the hook. He threw 113 punches. McKinney is bleeding in the mouth. Oh, oh what a right hand shot! Oh, what a return! Great body work by Barrera. McKinney has to hit Barrera's body to weaken him, too. I've said this over and over in this fight. You must weaken the guy's body as you go along. But guys, there's never been less need for a blow-by-blow -blow guy. I am just in awe. Oh, what two shots by McKinney. These guys are issuing out and receiving much punishment. Who's got a better chance of lasting 12, Roy? 
Marco is very hard to say. McKinney has a big heart. Oh, there's a right hand by McKinney. McKinney has a big heart. Guerrero Jr. in very good condition, so it's hard to say here. McKinney's whole career is on the line. He sees this as the ultimate crossroads fight for him. And he's fighting like that right now. Herrera's had 39 pro fights and won them all. Never fought McKinney, though. Look at Barrera backing up. He's not used to that. Not at all. That's what Coach Adams told McKinney to do to him. And that's why he told him, because he knows he's not used to it. Where did Kennedy's jab go, Roy? Well, <laughs> there, right there. Power shots, maybe. Who needs a jab? Yeah, I know you don't throw them. I throw them sometimes, only when necessary. You know, I, 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 fellas, this is the best of an American-style fighter against the best of a Mexican-style fighter, and it is this as is good belt. as you can hope for. I'll punch you after the belt. Good right hand by Kenny. Let it go, let it go. Let it go. Step out. Break, step all the way back. Hey. Mac, when you get yourself in a little trouble, here you go. Take a little win, more ground. Take some down, man. Now listen to me, Mac. When you get yourself, when you see yourself getting a little tired, go ahead and use that jab, okay? Use the jab and get a little distance. But Mac, you can... Oh, you know. Okay, you, you got to keep doing what you've been doing. And you got to go around. Walk him to the side, please. Nunca, nunca en las cuerdas, Marco. No te quedes en las cuerdas. Que él te agarra. Here is a clash of a veteran's skill and a youngster's will. How troublesome, Roy, is all that blood in the mouth for Kennedy McKinney? Not troublesome at all. You can't tell it from water. So in the nose, it'd be something different. Crowd is limp. Harold Letterman. That, there's your card oh, through uh, seven, Harold. What do you okay, think? Okay, Jim. I've got it 67, 66, four rounds to three. Marco Antonio Barrera. I think he's coming on with that hook. He's got Kennedy McKinney's oh, 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 left Kennedy, eye man. virtually closed. It's swollen badly. It's bothering Kennedy. Uh, I think Barrera, by putting out that pressure, is just taking the fight to Kennedy and, and uh, pulling out this fight. I have McKinney ahead, four rounds to two, one even. But keep in mind, we are in Los Angeles, which in effect is Barrera's hometown. Here again, McKinnon is starting to frustrate Barrera with the jab again. They should have told Barrera to keep putting pressure on McKinnon if he were going to win this fight. McKinnon is doing what he wants to do again, and I got him winning this round so far because he's doing what he wants to do. He's getting a break. He's landing the jab. He's not allowing Barrera to get off the big shot. Blows by Barrera. Undisciplined by referee Pat Russell. It would seem, Roy, that at this stage of the fight, it's against McKinney's best interest to get into exchanges. He could just play him with the jab. That's what he should do. That's why I say he should stay outside, be content with what's going on here, and he can win the fight. Because this is not Barrera's fight. This is McKinney's fight. That's all he should do. He should not press him too much. Hit him once. Oh, but see, he can't get caught back. Down goes Kennedy McKinney. I think Barrera lulled him to sleep a little bit there, Roy. He did, because he got too close to him. He can't get that close to him. Now, Barrera is an excellent finisher. He'll have a hard time getting out of this. He'll never make it out of this. Barrera is known as a great finisher. Is it for Barrera? There's a lot of time left in this round. He's only had 22 seconds. He should grab the whole ball. I think he may make it out of this round. He's going to make it. He's going to make it. McKinney survives. Boy, he survived a tough one.
This is what this fight's been about. Right after McKinney landed a big, huge right hand, Ferreira comes right back at him. This is the test of what makes a great young fighter. The enthusiasm, the ambition, the determination. McKinney just got too close to Barrera, like I said he would do. He's pushing the fight too much with Barrera because he should stay outside. Anytime he gets that close to Barrera, Barrera's going to hit him. Not many people sitting down in here as round nine begins. Promises to be an acid test for Kennedy McKinney. Barrera stalking. McKinney looking to land a shot that will turn the tide. That was one of them. Well, that was a warning shot to show him he's still <laughs> yeah, dangerous. That's right. He says, kid, you don't, you, I'm in here until I'm out of here. More than 200 amateur fights for Kennedy McKinney. Now's the moment when he has to dredge up all the experience he can muster. I think he's kind of tired. And, uh, the Guerrero keeps his fight up here, right up, right here up. He's going to be over shortly. The body shots are starting to show on McKinney. McKinney unable to throw back very often. Barrera just bearing in. Kennedy McKinney has never been knocked out in his professional boxing career. Barrera then back to what he wants to do now. Barrera showing patience. Crowd wants him to come strong. Showing very good patience, but he shouldn't be showing patience at this point. He had to got hurt the last round. That was the best he had been doing the whole fight. He should be all over the guy. Oh, he's got to like be tired. Just like he is now. He, he should be all over the guy. He can hit the guy that way. Kenny gets his track suit on. Kinney went down voluntarily to get out of trouble. That's right. Show me something. Let's go. You heard him say to Russell, I'm all right. You heard Russell say, you got to show me something. The referee has to give every benefit of the doubt to a great fighter as McKinney has been. That's right. Inside, McKinney carries his right hand. It's a little too low for a person with a good left hook as Barrera. A good popping jab there got Kennedy McKinney out of the corner. Now he begins to paw with the jab again. Is thrown, but here was now, the knockdown. From this accumulation of punches, although he, he didn't seem to be stunned, he just went down voluntarily to catch a rest. A smart move of a great veteran. Very smart move. One minute and 40 seconds between rounds there. Tremendous break for Kennedy McKinney, who got an extra 40 seconds of rest. Harold Letterman 
Jim, the California rule is, is when the doctor is, is called in between rounds, they call time, okay? In other words, the clock absolutely stops so that the doctor can look at the fighter and he's not, you know, and the uh, corner still has a full one minute to work on the fighter. So the doctor took 40 seconds, the corner got one minute to work on McKinney, a minute and 40 seconds. That, that accounts for it. All legal. One thing that also should be noted here is McKinnon sacrifices his head for his body. He keeps his hands lower to protect his body, and he'd rather depend on his head movement to protect his head. Excellent right by McKinnon. But the punches seem to have no effect on Marco. Another excellent right by, oh, that hurt McKinnon. That hurt Barrera. That shot hurt Barrera, finally. Barrera momentarily stunned and now backing up again. Barrera's hurt. Kennedy. Kennedy McKinney re-seizes the momentum of the fight. Barrera's hurt. He's not that hurt, but he is hurt. That long rest between rounds may have helped McKinney revive himself. Yeah, but he can't go too all out here at, at Barrera. He has to try to hit a one clean shot because Barrera's still powerful and strong. Kennedy McKinney has been here before when he first won the championship in this weight class from Welcome Nasita. He was knocked down twice in that fight, but came on to ultimately pull it out. If he can set him up with a good right hand here. Oh, good try. Oh, he got caught with a shot. And Pereira once again luring McKinney in by making himself an open target and then making Kennedy pay the price with the right hand. McKinney moves straight back off of Pereira's jab, and that's what now allows Pereira to land the straight right so often. Barrera is just as tired as McKinney is at this point. Mouthpiece goes down. I think that's Kennedy's mouthpiece. It is, but Kennedy is still on the move right here. He can't get careless, though. He's walking right down the pipe with his right hand. He can't get careless here. How about fighting with a bloody mouth and no mouthpiece, Roy? If the ref should move back, the action's going good. The ref needs to get back out the way. Let these cats fight. Come on, come on. Oh, come, come on. Ref. Oh, he stopped it. Yeah, he did the wrong thing. That's trippy. That's unfair. He shouldn't have did that. Harold, what in the world is the referee doing in the middle of an exchange of stopping the fight? Larry, the rule is you put it back at, you know, at a lull of the action. There was I mean, no lull. If, right? if there's no lull, the referee is absolutely no, wrong no, doing it. Given the way this fight is going, you never get a chance to put yeah, one of those there's no lull there. He should have left the mouthpiece out. The guys were fighting excellent. I think Look, he was he's worried about now. McKinney because of the bloody mouth. And round 10 comes to a close. You know, if this is an epitaph, for McKinney this fight as a prize fighter, that round should go down because he won that round after the last two rounds. Okay? Marco, don't stay in the, in the ropes. You have to get out of the ropes. You have to get back into the fight, Marco. That round, you lost it completely. You gotta get out of the ropes. The ropes are, yeah, don't stay in the ropes, Marco. Stay, stay in the middle of the ring, please. Only in the center of the ring. Did I hear somebody say, we love you, man? I think you said it. Round 11. And McKinney won his first title from Welcome to Sita back in 1992. He had gone down twice in the first 10 rounds and then knocked Nasita out in the 11th. And now suddenly we're back in round one with both fighters establishing the jab. <laughs> back in the fight now probably and he feels like all he has to do is be safe take his time and he may get a chance to knock McKinney down again however McKinney is highly in the fight I think the two knockdowns may have knocked him back a little it'll but be interesting if they go to the scorecards that's for sure and that's where they look like they're headed right now oh good shot by a girl. 
I could watch this fight for a week. I know they couldn't stand it, but I could. They're going to feel like they fought for a week. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Boy, if you were in Barrera's shoes right now, would you be thinking knockout, or would you be secure in the belief that you had a margin on the scorecard? I would constantly be... Oh, good shot on the Oh, good hard right hand. I would constantly be after the kill because... That's the first time Herrera has ever been down. And that was a legitimate shot. It was a he hard shot. All right, let's go. He said he slipped. He did slip too, but it was a hard shot. And Herrera wakes up and slips again. The good wise sign has gotten wet and it's caused him to slip. Tastes canvas for the first time ever in his career. A minute to go in round 11. If McKinnon wins this round, this will definitely make the score cause be interesting. Good combination in there by McKinney. He's landing the more solid punches in this round. Watch for it right here by McKinney there in a second now. He just about has him where he wants him. I see it coming. There it was. There it was. McKinney is a very smart veteran fighter. Excellent round here for McKinney. You look back at that minute and 40 second break between rounds 9 and 10. What an enormous benefit it was to the 30 year old fighter. Excellent right hand again by McKinney as the coming in. told Barrera to finish strong, but he's not comfortable here. a slip. That's a very frustrating thing to go through. I went through that once in a fight with Delano Malunga. Oh, he's hurt. Oh, that. tremendous left hand body shot. And McKinney says, I need a rest here. Come on, let's go. Here's the sixth let's knockdown go. of the fight. Nope. Russell's oh. going to call that a oh. slip, too. Oh, I like that was that. a legitimate knockdown. Yes, it was. And Barrera oh. thinks he can finish off of that one. And his corner watches with their hearts in their throats as he goes in and starts taking chances to throw. McKinney is a weak fighter now. Barrera knows it. And that's it. A fitting end 
Take a look at the action from earlier in the 12th round. Was a good right hand, but he did slip, I think. That one was counted as a knockdown by Pat Russell. Now here's the body shot, and that, I think, ultimately finished the fight. I think so, too, because I told you back in about round six or seven that you had to throw body shot. And here's the end. And I think Kenny, or Kennedy McKinney, in addition to being out on his feet from punching by Barrera, was also exhausted, Roy. Yeah, he was very exhausted. The body shots are taking a lot out of him. This is what I told you would be dead it's about a long fight for McKinney. If he didn't hit Barrera's body, Barrera, I mean, Barrera continued to pound on, uh, continued to pound on McKinney's body, and it told on the end. But even though he gets the second loss of his career, you got to be proud of your old buddy for his guts and his effort. I am very, very proud of him. I told you he would never back down from nobody. I told you he would give a gallant effort, and he did everything and more than I could ever have seen. Before. And now the crowd pays tribute to a fantastic young talent, 22-year-old Marco Barrera, and as he showed, he's a man in there. Total punches in the fight. Barrera landing 77 more, throwing 60 more, landing exactly 50% of his punches. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at two minutes, five seconds of the last round, round 12. The winner by knockout victory and still the undefeated junior featherweight champion of the world. Marco Antonio Barrera. That was one of the better fights that I think I've ever witnessed in my life. For an old Olympic teammate, he makes me feel good to say that he was on my Olympic team. Well, I guess the time was right for boxing after dark. Couldn't have picked a better fight. Yeah, you said that at the beginning of the evening. You yeah. said that you could, we could not have picked a better fight for our first attraction here on Boxing After Dark, and as it turned out, you couldn't have been more right. I call it like I see him, and that's the way I saw that one. And now Larry stands by with the victorious Marco Antonio Barrera. Congratulations, Marco. Did he fight you better and tougher than you thought he would? I expected to fight just the way it was because McKinney's the grand champion. He, de he demonstrated that. And yet, at the end of the fight, you seem so bitter that you wouldn't shake hands with him despite that. Tell us why. Sabiendo que él es un gran campeón y ahora última hora, esto después que vino a felicitarte, no le diste la mano. ¿Por qué? Porque él me ofendió en frente de todo el público mexicano. Because he offended me in front of the, the Mexican public, and I was uh, very angry at that. He hit you with many, many big right hands. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, now, now we got it. All right, Kennedy, you've seen a lot of fighters in your day. You've fought a lot of hard fights. Tell us what you think of the young man you fought tonight. Tough fighter, good fighter. 
Uh, I just think the age was a different. 22 years old, I'm 30. But uh, I mean, what, what, what can I say? I had a layoff of a year, and I think that hurt me more than anything. You hit him with a lot of your best shots, but he just seems to take everything. He was good. I mean, I give the kid a lot of credit. He'll be good. I don't know if he's the next champion, but he's close to it. Is are you going to continue to fight after this? Why not? I mean, I put up a good show. I want a rematch. Can I have a rematch? Can I have a rematch? Claro, claro. Well, I got to tell you, been a good fighter, kid, or, or a hard fighter, because he's a human being. Maybe in the future he wants to be the, the champion in the world. Thank you very much, and I got to say that everybody saw this fight would certainly love to see it again. I had everybody in Memphis. Hey, I didn't get that one, but hey, I'll be back. Thank you very much, Kennedy. Good job, Marco Prashad. Oh, yeah. Thank you. He hit you with a lot of hard shots. Did he ever hurt? Did he ever hurt you? No, no me dio ningún golpe duro, pero sí me me estuvo golpeando constantemente. He didn't hit me with uh, with a real hard shot. He didn't stun me, but he hit, he did hit a lot of tough shots. Were you, he seemed to be able to dictate what was happening in there with his jab. Were you surprised by that? No, yo ya sabía que él iba a salir a dar lo mejor de él. Y pues como yo lo dije en la conferencia de prensa, dice que él no va a tener hasta el doceavo round. He says, uh, he knew that that's the way he was going to fight, dictating the pace with his hand. But uh, like I said in the press conference, the knockout would come out in the twelfth round. You felt that you would wear him down. Tú sentiste que lo ibas a debilitar mientras iba la pelea. Sí, yo sentía que sí, pero fue un poco difícil darle mi golpeo abajo. Entonces tuvimos que concentrar un poco arriba. Yeah, I figured that's the way it would be, but it was kind of hard to hit him in the body because of the, he was afraid of the low blow, so he went to upstairs. Thank you for a great fight. Muchas gracias, Marco. Buena pelea. Gran pelea. All right, Jim, I did check with the referee, and he did say that he told McKinney that he did have as big a heart as any fighter he ever saw. All right, thanks very much, Larry. And that's pretty much a fitting postscript on the effort put forth here tonight by Kennedy McKinney. Once again, he won an Olympic gold medal back in Seoul, South Korea, when he was on the same team with this man, the great Roy Jones. We know what you think of Kennedy McKinney. What do you think of Marco Antonio Barrera? Well, like I said before, I've said it over and over and over again. I see Mar Marco Antonio Barrera as one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world today. Simple as that. Will his body take him up from 122 as far as maybe 135 pounds at some point in his career where he can begin to get bigger exposure and the kind of money that that kind of greatness uh, ought to deserve? No, I don't think so because he's only about 5'5", five five, and the way his body seems to be built, he would have to almost be fat or get muscle-bound to comfortably make 135 pounds. So let's appreciate him right where he is, and we'll appreciate you for another great job, Roy. We'll see you on the next edition of Boxing After Dark. Thank you very much. Quite welcome. Roy Jones, Jr., and we turn now to uh, Larry Merchant, who's made his way down from the ring. Well, you said it all, and uh, as you said early in the fight, it doesn't get any better than that. What are your final thoughts on a tremendous war? Uh, I think boxing after dark will has a future. <laughs> Can we bring him back next time? <laughs> Let's not promise that they're all going to be like that one. Well, we'll take this for starters. I guess my the only thought I have is that uh, recently the astronomers found 40 billion more galaxies out there in the heavens. But I guarantee you, if there are any planets out there with prize fighters, they never fought a better fight and they saw it tonight. All of us are high. We celebrate these great athletes for what they put themselves through for our entertainment and for their satisfaction. And all we can say is the way to go. Yeah, it was tremendous. <laughs> now, final word on a subject we touched briefly early in the telecast. HBO had the privilege of televising a handful of boxing matches prior to the year 1981. But it was really in that year that we had the privilege of tele televising our first big mega fight. It was the first ever meeting between Thomas Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. And coincidentally, it was also the first stroll on the world stage for a little promotional outfit from New Jersey named Main Events and for a young promoter named Dan Duba. That's just one of many reasons, too many reasons to count, why we marked Dan's passing earlier this week with special sadness here at HBO. Tonight, as we leave the air, our thoughts go to Dan's father, Lou, his wife, Kathy, his children, Nicole, Lisa, and Brian, because we know that all of them tonight miss Dan Duva 
just as much, in fact, more than we do. has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.